Hello everyone, normally I don't start videos with a disclaimer, but I've had the flu for a couple weeks now of some kind. Not COVID, I did test for it. And so my voice is really bad right here. But this is an older discussion Nate and I recorded a couple weeks ago before I got sick that I kind of wanted to share with you guys. The irony is not lost on me that when talking about games that are games as a service, that pretty much any multiplayer game will have elements of this. There are some that I enjoy. It's not lost on me that I have a Fortnite creator code that I use to promote my channel. And, I, and that is something I want to address here too, because the last thing I want to do is be a hypocrite. I do believe that there are caveats to this discussion. I do believe that there are games that do this thing worse than others. My personal opinion is that when you have to pay full price for a game, it should not be having these things in it. Whereas games that are giving you the entire gameplay experience for free that then go on to do things like what Fortnite does, where they'll, you know, hand out codes that help support creators like me. I'm a little more, you know, tolerant of that. I actually enjoy that more and it makes me more inclined to play the game. Someone like me struggles with a lot of disability issues. So things like the Fortnite code, you know, things like that, they really go to help the channel. That's why I talk about them. And that's why I did want to mention that in a video that's about games as a service. I understand that some people are going to say, well, hey, you can't dislike some elements of this thing because you have taken mobile game ads before or you, you know, used to play RuneScape and blah, blah, blah. I understand. I don't think life is fully black and white. I don't think really anybody isn't a hypocrite in some way or doesn't have some exceptions. So when talking about this, just try and keep that in mind. Still human beings here, and how you spend your time and money is up to you. Now, this two minutes of talking was way too much for me, so I'm going to let the rest of the video play. But I do hope you enjoy it, and I am interested in your thoughts down below. With our question of the day today, is there a multiplayer game that you enjoy that maybe has elements like this? Like maybe there's an online shooter like Halo you play, or maybe an MMO like World of Warcraft. You know, those things that have been around for years and that probably will be, like I said, or even Fortnite, you know, it's been around for so long and it, it's not going anywhere. I'm much more like, okay, I can see the investment of your time here. So that's why I want to know if there's anything like that for you out there. So hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for listening to me. I promise that my voice won't sound like this the rest of the video. Games as a service, live service gaming. These things are everywhere. I'm going to be interested in your thoughts down below. I feel like a lot of people have accepted live service games and games as a service as a mainstay. I don't really want to make the argument that they should not exist at all, that nobody should be allowed to play them or make them or anything like that. But I do think that they've gotten too big. This seems to be a topic that a lot of people have a lot of strong opinions on. There's a lot of problems that these games have. I understand the benefit is they can constantly update whatever game it is, add more content for you to enjoy, and a lot of the times that content is actually free and then funded by cosmetics. It also becomes very obsessive. Like, it always seems to me like the goal of this model of gaming is to get you to spend all of your time, all of your money on that game. Yeah, and I feel like games as a service or live service games, the problem with them is they can work and they can be a lot of fun. Like, for example, a game I play a lot is Clash Royale. Mm -hmm. On the, It's a mobile game. Super fun. It's a live service game. I have spent some money on it. They constantly update with new cards and, and different things like that. Uh, something like that works. Something like Fortnite works as live service. You know, you hop on, you go play, you shoot some of your friends, you know, whatever. You build like the Taj Mahal around them. Uh, it's really fun. Yeah. Something like Fallout 76 does not work for live service. It gets really Fallout irritating. is not a live service game. You say you, but you play that. I play it and it's really fun. But I'm just saying, what is the, like, why? Why do we have to delve into li the live service territory with a single player experience like Fallout? You know, you could have just added multiplayer to it. Like, for example, if let's say I have a world on the game and then you want to come to my world. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's all you have to do with it. Well, that's but, what Minecraft did. Yeah. Minecraft did so, a good job. And then you can buy skins if you yeah, want if to. If you want you, to. You actually could just never buy them. Mm -hmm. Never buy and a single the blast. texture pack ever. And you have a full game right there. So, I think a big problem I have with like games like Fallout 76 
this does very much prey on the completionist attitude. Yeah. Where it's like, well, I want every outfit. Or, oh, I really want to have all the content. You know, I don't want to be playing a game and other people have way more content than me in the game. That, right. that sucks. I want to have access to all that content so I can enjoy the game as much as I want. These live service games, though, the only way to do that with a lot of them is to either spend an exorbitant amount of money or a massive amount of time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes both. You know, and I'm not going to act like I never play live service games ever. I used to be huge into Destiny. I still play Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. That game's really fun, but in a lot of ways, it's carried for me by loving Final Fantasy VII. Right. And yeah. in a lot of ways for me, Fallout 76 is carried by loving Fallout. Which, that's another problem I have with this, is that have you noticed that when Fortnite came up, it wasn't the first live service game by any means, but when Fortnite came up and it was starting to popularize things like battle passes and stuff, it didn't make it hard to do. Mm -hmm. The first battle pass you buy is really cheap. They're all really cheap. And then if you wanted to, you could just buy one battle pass and then earn, you know, the V-Bucks through that battle pass and then just buy the next one. Mm -hmm. You just never engage with the store if you don't want to. You just keep earning characters. A lot of times there's licensed characters in those battle passes, you know, like characters from movies or whatever. And then you just kind of keep getting it. I'm not saying there's no pay in, but you had a free game. Then you basically have a, you know, tiny buy in and you can just keep earning stuff if you want. Then if you want to engage in the cosmetics in the store, you can. Right. That's, I'm okay with that. I think that as things went on, did you notice how it got more and more toxic with a lot of these games? Like Call of Duty, they started putting in live service elements. Except for them, it's like 20 times as grindy as it was in Fortnite. You know, Apex, they have to have these different uh, seasons and stuff. Oh, well, Apex is fun, so it's okay. It's like, yeah, but Apex literally bent over Titanfall, shafted it, and left it dead in a ditch. Right. Like, Titanfall was a great... Titanfall 2 had a fantastic single-player campaign and a, a really fun multiplayer, and it just didn't do well because of self-sabotage. And then Apex came out of nowhere, and it's like, oh, games as a service. Have you noticed how more and more single-player things or things that have good single players are transitioning to this model? Well, yeah, and that's, and that's kind of my point with my thing was... The, li, games as a service and live service games are fine when they work out, but I don't get why we need them everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the other problem with it is the live service games take so much of your time, too. Like, if you want to, let's say you play Fortnite and let's say you dabble in, I don't know, Fallout 76 or something. Like, you you, you love those two games. That's pretty much all your time. Mm-hmm. Because you're going on Fortnite, you're doing the Battle Pass, then you're going on Fallout 76, you're doing the Battle Pass on that, or, or the Season, or whatever they call it. And by the time you're done with it, then you're basically done with all your free time that you have. And to me, that's kind of stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't want to go home every night after work and play the same two games every night. You know, I want to go home after night after work and be like, oh, I want to play Spider-Man 2. I don't want to feel like I'm obligated to go on and play Fallout 76. You know, and this is the problem with these live service games is because they make it so complicated and complex to do the seasons, you feel obligated to go and do these arbitrary challenges. Yeah, you pointed that out too. When you go on these games a lot of times, you're not actually just playing them. No, it's not like I'm doing like a mission in Fallout. You're, you're like, you're I looking... want to kill five dogs. Yeah, and then you have to go and do that arbitrary challenge. And I know we keep mentioning Fallout. That's probably the live service game you and I play the most. Yeah. But this is true across a lot of games. You have to play the game like a job. Yeah. You know, right. you have to go through a checklist of things you have to do, like chores. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why it's become popular for games to become a chore. And, you know, regardless of how you feel about this series, I was actually looking at footage of Elden Ring right now while I talked about this. Elden Ring is an example of a game that came out it's about $70 when it came out. And there is hundreds of hours of content. There is really as much content as you want to be. When the games are like Fortnite, when the grinding is not really that grindy, it's mostly just getting it through natural play, sometimes looking up a challenge here or there, it's whatever to me. You know, do I want every game to be that? No. But am I okay with some? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's fine. And that's why there's options in gaming. But a big problem I have with these is that the prices are getting more expensive Companies are having more balls to charge way more for tiny things. 
Look at Call of Duty. You Call of Duty's the worst. It's like the Nicki Minaj skin pack, which like, hey, look, I think Nicki's just as hot as the next guy. But you go to try and buy that skin pack, and it's like $15, $20, I believe, to yeah. get her and a gun and like one other thing, basically. Why? Why? Why is it that much money? Let's say you want to, uh, you know, compare stuff. It's like, oh, I could buy three big skin packs on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and with Warzone or whatever. Or... I could go buy the Resident Evil Origins collection, two games remastered for 20 bucks now, new. Oh, I could buy Resident Evil 2 Remake, 20 more bucks. Oh, I could buy three Remake, 20 more bucks. Or, and that's not even like the best value of like time per, you know, like your money. Yeah. You could also be like, I'll go buy Dark Souls Remastered and I'll buy the Resident Evil Origins collection and then I'll go buy Nier, you know, like Nier Automata or whatever for 25, 30 bucks. It's like you now have hundreds of hours of stuff to do, or you have three costumes in a game that will eventually shut down. We see this with sports games. Sports games are the most oh, toxic. They're, they're the worst with this. It's just become like uh, somehow gray area gambling. I knew someone back in high school with a, with a NHL game who got a paycheck and it was $500 and he put the entire paycheck into cards mm -hmm. on a game that literally ended the year later. Yeah. Like, like, it was done. Like, no one was playing that game, basically, the next year. And then it was shut down with like within two or three years. Yeah, and I'm like, why did you dump your entire paycheck into this game? Well, that's the thing, and a lot like, of people... What is... A lot of people just say, like, well, that just shows that people are stupid. And it's like... Yeah, it does. But... Sure, but it's still preying off of addictive personalities. Yeah, right. I, I will genuinely get sometimes sponsorships for mobile games. Mm -hmm. And I actually have a couple coming up, too. But you know what I understand when I say, like, hey, this mobile game's cool, you should check it out. One, I think the people who watch my videos understand, okay, this is a natural part of YouTube now. People need to be able to make money to promote their stuff and, like, get their content out there. But two, also, I think people understand, hey, the person talking to me about this knows that you should play these games responsibly. Yeah. Knows that you should be smart, you should think about it. I'm not saying, hey... Spend $3,000 on the game, <laughs> buy everything, you know, do this, do that. All of your time, your life is now that game. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like, hey, this is a fun game to mess around on. Right. I think it's neat. That's what I think live service games should be. You play it, you have fun for a little bit, and then you're like, I'm going to go play Dark Souls. You know, like, that's not the meat and potatoes of your video game time. It's more just like a fun distraction. Right. If it was a game like World of Warcraft, where, yes, it will probably shut down in a hundred years or something, but we know that that game is here to stay for a long time. Yeah. If it was a game like that, where it's already proven, okay, it's been here for, you know, a long time. It's like, okay, well, this is not going anywhere right now. You want to spend your money on that, that's fine. Whatever you want to do. But some of these games, it'll be like, you know, these sports games or even uh, Call of Duty, stuff like that you know that your purchases are going to go away. You know, they're not going to transfer over to a new game or the game will eventually shut down or the game will be dead. Mm -hmm. And so then, too, you also have a problem of preservation. But any money I spent on it, too, is just gone. It went to the company. Have you ever looked at the user agreement? They always pretty much say they can shut the game down whenever they want for whatever reason they want. Yep. And you can't do anything about it. Yeah, and the problem is a lot of people nowadays have begun to, begun to accept that. Yeah, they don't like, care. Like, I honestly think people don't care. You know, no one cares about Resident Evil Origins Collection on the PS4, even though it's a fun game. A lot of gamers out there just are like, what's the newest thing? You know, you see this all the time on, uh, I'm going to pick on Xbox Bros here for a second, but Xbox Bros have, like, some weird hard-on for Game Pass, mm -hmm. and you see them, like, argue all the time on, on, on Twitter. They'll be like, Game Pass, great! I have all these games day one. Uh -huh. and what's the next thing that's coming you know, to Game Pass? That, that's all they care about. It's just, yeah. this game came out on Game Pass. Uh -huh. PlayStation doesn't have that. But then you go and to Target like, and, you know, like we, we went to Target recently. Yeah. We looked at the Xbox game section. It's like a third the size of PlayStation yep. because now physical games don't sell on the console. Yeah. So then in the future, if you ever want to own that stuff, you you can't. Right. And that's the thing. I don't think they care. You know, which which does not make sense to me. Like, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make sense to me at all. Like, do you go out there and watch Star Wars Episode Four once and then throw it away and never watch it ever again in your entire life? This is the thing. Why are movies you know, seen differently on that's this? That's the thing. Like, like, people go back and watch, I don't know, like, 
The Godfather, for example, it's a pretty old movie. Mm -hmm. They go back and watch The Godfather and they still love it. Like The Godfather is seen as one of the greatest movies ever created. And I don't think anyone would stand around here and argue that the movie is terrible and worthless and we need to move on because it's not the newest thing. But yeah, for video games, people don't care about this stuff. Everyone just wants the newest thing. It's, oh, this game came out, so I'll play this game. Oh, but I'm not even touching the old game anymore. Mm -hmm. which, which doesn't make sense to me. And I think that plays into the live service argument, too. Because these companies want you to think that way. Yeah. These companies don't want you to go back and play Arkham City. Unless they remaster it. Unless they remaster it, then they <laughs> want you to buy the game. Right. But they don't want you to go back and play Arkham City. They want you to play Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League because they can have a battle pass in the game. Right. And then once they're tired of Suicide Squad, they'll shut the game down, just like they did with Arkham Origins online. Once they're tired of it, they'll just be like, yeah, whatever, we'll shut that down. And then they'll come out with the next thing. It'll be, oh, here's uh, uh, the Green Lantern game, but it's only it's only a battle pass. So you better buy everything in the battle pass to play a Green Lantern game. You know, that that's the problem. So what they want you to do is always move on to the next thing. If the next thing isn't some service, it's a remaster of an old game they already did because it's easier to do that than to make something new and solid with a lot of content. Well, that's the same thing with our, uh, Assassin's Creed 4. Every other one got, on the Xbox at least, got the 4K 60 FPS update. They never touched Assassin's Creed 4. And then what magically appeared after that was a possible Assassin's Creed 4 remake. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting, in my opinion, that that magically happened that way. Um, yeah, because I think that's why companies want to do that. They just want you to play the newest thing. And they don't, you know... Bethesda does not want you playing Fortnite, they want you putting all your time into Fallout 76. Yep, or Elder Scrolls or Elder, Online. Yeah, that, that's what they want. So that's why they make these battle passes or seasons or whatever it is in the game. They make them a chore. Because they, they put in all these things and you look at them and you go, Oh, cool, I want this uh, gun or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I better go play the Fallout 76 season. That's what they want. But the fact remains that this stuff goes away. Like, mm -hmm. there's no preservation of it. You know, you try and go back, like, how many mobile games have been delisted? Right. So many. How many games, too, have we seen where you lose the license and those games are just gone and they can't go on things like Xbox Game Pass? You know, we will see things like movie tie-in games, some of which are good. We'll see old Spider-Man games, which have been a problem forever because there's no license for them anymore. You know, and those aren't on Game Pass. Those aren't online. Now the only way to have them is to have bought a disc or bought it digitally and had it installed on your machine. That's it. Right. But with games as a service, you don't even have that luxury. Because even if you could play a stripped-down version of the game, there's no game in 5, 10 years to play. It's just gone. Because it was so internet-reliant that you can't do anything without their servers. You know, you j there's just nothing there. You know, and people always say, like, games haven't shut down before. It's like, dude, you can go up and look up a list. I'm not even going to run through them here. But you can look up a list of, like, games you can't play anymore or games that have shut down that were online only. There's a there's a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. Some of them are mobile, but there's a bunch that weren't. Some of them were PC, like The Sims Online. Some of them were console. It just... Gotham City Imposters. Yeah, that's... I'm still upset about that. Yeah, that was a fun game. And now it's just dead. There's really nothing you can do in it. Uh, PlayStation Home was another example of one. Free Realms was a game that Jill talks about a lot. There are games that are just gone. And unless someone reverse engineers or recreates them, a lot of which, you know, a lot of the time they get hit with a cease and desist mm -hmm. because the company doesn't want to use it, but they don't want anyone else to have fun with it either. So a lot of times those things just go away. And it's a big problem, I think, for gaming because it would be insane to me if this was acceptable for any other media Imagine if movies were treated the way games as a service or the way food is, where you just consume the movie, shit it out, and you're done. You know, the only real experience like that, I guess, is the movie theater. And the trade-off is that you're going to see it way earlier. You're seeing it with probably better technology than you have at home, a much bigger screen, better audio. You're having a social event with friends. Mm -hmm. Most of these games as a services are not social events with friends. But even with movies, then you get the option to buy it later. You know, you could choose like, eh, I'm not going to go see Spider-Man No Way Home. I'll just buy it when it comes out on 4K for 30 bucks. Yeah. 
And, you know, you spend the same amount you would have spent to go to the theater, probably, with food. And a lot of people do that. They don't bother going anymore because they say, okay, well, this is a better use of my money. That's the point I'm trying to make with games as a service is not that you can't have a little fun on them, spend a little time once in a while, but that there are so many better uses of your money most of the time in gaming that are everywhere. You know, where you could get 100 hours of content, in some cases from games that have been out for years, for 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. Or you could buy a costume in one game right that will go away yeah and that's and that's just kind of the dumb part about it you know and to kind of harken back to my original point i'm fine with games as a service for some games it really kind of bothers me when games that do not belong in the games of the service market go to the games of the as a service market yes you know for example let's say let's say the next dark souls game let's say they made dark souls 4 finally Let's say they finally made Dark Souls 4, but they're like, hey, but it's always online, and we have a battle pass, and you have to play in multiplayer mode. It's like, what's the point of this? Right. You have a single-player experience that you're like, well, that's converted to multiplayer. It's like, but this isn't what this is for. Mm -hmm. this, 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 does, this doesn't work. Right. This specific game was not built for this type of thing. And that that's my problem, where more and more companies are seeing Fortnite... And more and more companies are like, well, our thing can work as Fortnite. Like, Fortnite works. Yeah. Fallout 76 does not work. I know I'm just picking on that, but that that's in my brain right now. Well, I think that's the it's, one you've spent the most time on. Other yeah. Than Clash of Cool Clans Royale or whatever. Right. I mean, yeah, my, me and my clans. Right. You know, and my fear is that Assassin's Creed uh, Infinite or Infinity, whatever it's called, my fear is it's going to be something similar to this. That's my fear. Because mm -hmm. it's like, and, and in my opinion, it's the same way. Assassin's Creed does not belong in this. Mm -hmm. So it's so I'm just tired of these companies feeling like everything needs to be games as a service. And I'm also tired of gamers feeding into this. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone wants to hop on COD and, and have fun, fine. Maybe if they want to buy a couple skins... Whatever, I don't care. But the people I'm talking about are people like the person I used to know who put an entire $500 paycheck into NHL. Yeah. Like, you are just feeding into this problem, and these companies know that people feed into this problem, so they continue doing it. Yeah, it's called whales. Yes. And a lot of the times, whales actually support a game more than casual players. Yeah. You know, the reason that a lot of these games are profitable is because you'll have one or two percent of your player base that's willing to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on the game. Another problem with this is streamers. Yeah, streamers do the exact same thing. They put thousands of dollars into games. Right. Yeah, that's the thing, too. And it's like, it's not just a little bit. You know, like, when I played Ever Crisis, I would say I put 40 bucks into it because I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm doing a Let's Play on this. People want to be entertained. This would be kind of fun. Let's mm -hmm. just do this. But you'll have people whose entire job, and I get it, you know, like, the hustle or whatever, you know, you do you. <laughs> But still, like, their entire job will be like, I'm going to open FIFA packs all day, and it's a tax write-off. Right. And they that's their whole job. And they can literally just say, that's a business expense, because the only reason people watch me is for uh, opening uh, Ultimate Team cards. Right. In Madden or whatever. A lot of times, is there's, like, this subset, I should say, of people who will watch a streamer spend $10,000 on a Counter-Strike Go skin for a gun, and then they'll be like... Oh boy, I'm going to be the next XX32 Pussy Kicker 35 XX. <laughs> and they'll go on and they'll think like they're hot shit and they'll spend like $10,000 of mom's credit card and like <laughs> say like, mom, now it's time to go to the corner and proposition men so I can buy more skins and battle passes. And their mother will like leave their card in there and then head <laughs> on out. And it's like, what are you doing? Like right. you, you are, you, you think that because somebody does this thing online that it's good. And so then they, they take that example for some reason and they roll with it. It's one thing if you just have a little fun once in a while. Mm -hmm. Like the people who go to the casino, they spend 20 bucks. They're like, oh, well, I had a good fun hour and a half. I lost 20 bucks. It's another thing if you're like the grandma there mindlessly pressing the slot machine for three years straight and you're down 20 grand. I know. It's like, what are you doing? You know? You're just feeding into the problem. I will take sponsorships from them. I know some people have problems with that. They're like, you shouldn't. It's like, well, okay, but I have to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. And I only take them from games I think are fun. Um, but, you know, I just don't think that whaling is a good thing. 
You know, when you're like being a whale, I should say. Whaling is a say, There's a whole like, show on is... that. There's a whole show on that. I was say, what do we have? Like, <laughs> you have just, like PETA here? Like, I pull up my mask. You're like, no, let's see who you really are. And I'm an animal rights activist. Like, take my mask off. We need to end whaling now. <laughs> The men in black are going to have to come in and pull me out of like the, the recorder. No, um, I, I just don't think being a whale is good. I don't think dedicating all your time to these things is good. I think it's toxic. I think it's addictive. I think that people who do this need to get help. People around them who see it should be trying to get them help because it's genuinely dangerous. Mm -hmm. It should be something that's just a fun little thing, you know? But there are some people who take it way too seriously. They become way too addictive. And those are the people really feeding these problems. Do you really think every game would be games as a service if most people just logged in, played the games as a service for free, and maybe spent 20 bucks on it over its lifetime? Of course not. They would switch back to a different model. Right. But it's these people who are toxically enabling it and just going ham on it that I think are ruining it for everybody and making this a mainstay type of game mainstay type of game that has expanded into other territories that it doesn't belong and become slower and slower yes. and grindier to and do. more expensive yes you know that yeah and that's the big problem is it's like like you said if if you know everyone just logged in and put 20 40 dollars in the game it might be a thing for like Fortnite or a couple other games you know maybe there are some games as a service games out there I can guarantee you Suicide Squad to kill the Justice League would not be games as a service. Right. I can guarantee you that would be a single Avengers. player. Marvel's Avengers would not be a games as a service. Uh, Fallout 76 would not be. I can guarantee you. Right. But it's all these people out there who just like mindlessly fund their entire paychecks into this game. And then my other question is, how do you have a, a life? Right. Yeah, you you don't because you basically just have to play that thing. Like you it's... go to work, you come home and you just dump everything you make into this thing. So anyway, let us know what you think in the comments down below. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. Whatever you want to do with your time and money is your call, but I really do think that there's this pervasive attitude that is it's just harming the medium. And it would uh it would be laughed at and mocked out of the medium in like other types of media. But for some reason in gaming, it's like, ah, eh, whatever. Who cares? Mm -hmm. So let us know what you think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. We appreciate you very much. Have a fantastic day. And as always, everyone, stay shway.